Um, Borida, uh, uh, good morning and welcome to the webinar on um, alternative uh, finance advice. We've got uh, four speakers for you today, and um, I'm Alan Jones, an international trade advisor based up in North Wales, and some of my colleagues are also uh, on, on the webinar as well. Um, just a few housekeeping before we start. Can I ask you all to turn off your cameras and your microphones, please? And the, the only um, cameras and microphones that will be on will be the speakers. Um, you're welcome to ask any questions in the chat bar, and we're happy to accept the questions in both English and Welsh. Um, if any questions are asked in Welsh, then I will gladly translate them into English. Our first speaker this morning is Stephen Wilson from UK Export Finance. Uh, Stephen's got a wealth of experience in the financial sector, um, being based in South Wales for a number of years. So, Christo, Stephen, welcome, and I look forward to hearing what you've got to say this morning. I believe you're on mute, Steve. OK, good morning, everybody. Uh, thank you, Alan, for the introduction. Um, such my main responsibilities are as Export Finance Manager for Wales and Herefordshire. Uh, I'm here to promote exports to Welsh companies. It's very important. First of all, a little bit about UK Export Finance. Basically, UK is part of Export Credit Guarantee Department. Can you move the slide on, please? Part of Export Credit Guarantee Department, um, established as an export credit agency in 1919. Most uh, countries around the world have got their own export credit agencies, uh, and they uh, operate together uh, and agree what can be done and what can't be done in terms of things like consensus interest rates on large projects. Um, we work very closely with DIT. Um, we uh, work together with banks and independent finance companies and insurance companies in the private sector to basically promote exports and what we are always looking to do is fulfilling orders for exports, assessing their viability, working in conjunction with the banks and with the aim, of course, to always getting paid. Uh, in terms of tried and tested product ranges, uh, which I'll come on to shortly, we provide exports insurance policies to cover by a default. Buyer finance, where we're underwriting foreign, uh, foreign buyers. Uh, and working capital products to fill the gaps with uh, within the trading cycle of a business. And it goes without saying that we have been pretty successful for many, many years and have won numerous awards. Next slide, please. We cover uh, all types of goods and services. Last year, we covered 12.3 billion pounds worth of UK exports. 79% of our business was supporting SMEs as such, which is, which is excellent. Uh, in terms of supporting exports, we, well, we work together with DIT and Welsh Assembly Government uh, around the world to promote our Welsh exporters' goods and financing can be obtainable in numerous different currencies. Next slide, please. In terms of our products, buyer finance is a key one uh, where, in fact, we are looking at underwriting a foreign buyer. Um, in terms of a buyer credit facility, what we look at there is where maybe a foreign government or, or uh, very large corporate 
is looking to uh, invest in it may be a large project it could be a factory or a hospital something like that what we look at is the transparency in terms of the government um, placing lo looking to assess the uh, bids that come in uh, we're looking at the viability of the project and we're very much looking at uh, the feasibility of the product in terms of payback over a period of time those transactions tend to be on the very large size mainly i would say 25 million and and, and over as such um, they uh, have got a, are pretty complex they take quite a long time to complete and they look at separately separate legal agreements we also provide direct lending to over, overseas corporates and sovereign states um, there is a standard buy a loan guarantee which is not dissimilar to a buyer credit facility apart from this standard documentation involved there and those type of facilities are available for projects of half million and over and in terms of the bills and notes guarantee we're looking it's looking there similarly to underwriting the final buyer where uh, UK are taking the security of bills and notes uh, either on the the on this on the sovereign debt as such in terms of guarantee facilities uh, the bond support scheme has been going for a number of years now this is involved where there is an underlying commercial contract between an exporter and a buyer uh, we will effectively step in and work with a commercial bank uh, where they've signed the UK master agreement as such and we will give delegated authority to that bank for 80 percent of the level of the facility similarly with the export working capital scheme always has to be an underlying commercial contract as such and again we give delegated authority to a number of banks and we will the bank will provide the facility and UK will effectively underwrite the bank for 80 percent new product this year is a general export facility called Jeff for short this basically is a facility normally for up to two years it can be can be uh, uh, for a longer tenor uh, up to about five million pounds as such though there are exceptions and the prime concerns there from a UK perspective is that in any one of the last three years the company should have exported 20% of their turnover or alternatively 5% of their turnover in the last three years the difference with the Jeff is that there doesn't have to be an underlying commercial contract again we will work with the bank delegated authority and we'll give them a guarantee for 80% and the other thing that marks this facility out is that the bank itself can actually carve out the facility really in any which way it wants to so it can provide trade facilities it can provide payment uh, a trade loan facility for either exports or imports the only type of facility it can't cover is a spot and forward foreign exchange facility export development guarantees are often dubbed as a super jeff and these works on a very similar basis but effectively for facilities in excess of 25 million pounds uh, supply supply chain discount guarantees are basically to fund uk exporters where their where they need requirements to fund their supply chain moving on to insurance as far as insurance is concerned where there is no commercial uh, insurance company that can insure a overseas buyer UKEV will look at insuring that buyer both in respect of the debt and also pre-shipment cover to cover the risks during manufacture etc uh, there are certain criteria that obviously needs to be met we have to know who we're dealing with we need to know that they exist and we will need up-to-date financials but nevertheless it's a great facility to to have that actually uh, it's one of those facilities that not many people know that we've got 
Okay, next slide, please. In terms of my role as uh, an export finance manager, basically we're obviously looking to uh, underwrite underwrite trade finance facilities as such, um, working with the banks on delegated authority as such. We are looking to assist UK uh, Welsh exporters with regard to their finance in their supply chain. The uh, interest rate is applicable to a lot of the buyer credit transactions are very attractive, particularly in the current marketplace. Now, the real aim I'm working with working with government, Welsh government, Scottish government uh, and UK government is obviously to retain jobs, retain jobs, promote UK exporters. And it's quite stark the fact that, you know, in Wales, the percentage of companies that are actually exporting is literally just over 10%. Where UKEV uh, cannot assist, there are occasions where we can't assist uh, you, uh, Welsh exporters, then basically, and that part of the purpose for today is to, to introduce uh, alternative funders that's absolutely key. So we work with alternative funders, a panel of which we've got with us today, to try and provide solutions to promote uh, Welsh exporters as such. You know, the key aim at all for, all for UK export finance is to assist Welsh exporters with their aim of fulfilling orders, getting the contracts and, and getting paid. OK, that concludes my presentation on UK export finance. Thank you, Stephen. Uh, very informative um, and uh, welcome to the post as well. I should have welcomed you earlier at the outset. Uh, as Stephen mentioned, um, there are various other sources of finance available to Welsh businesses other than the uh, traditional high street banks. And it's a pleasure now to introduce Alex from Dynamic Funding um, to explain what Dynamic has to offer us. Thank you, Alex. You're on mute. Apologies. Um, thank you for that. Um, yeah, good morning everyone. My name is Alex. Um, I've been running Dynamic Funding and working with UK Export Finance now for the last um, four years. Um, so yeah, as I'm sure you're aware, the, um, there's a large variety of funding products available um, to UK businesses. Um, the market's moving very quickly and lenders' eligibility criteria are changing um, on almost a daily basis. Um, so yeah, today I'm going to give you a brief overview into some of the products that could help your business uh, grow overseas. Next slide, please. So yeah, types of business funding. I'm going to start off with the uh, recovery loan scheme. Um, so this is um, the latest government backed product uh, and the follow on from the uh, C-bills and bounce back loan schemes. Um, so yeah, the, the key points really here to understand are that a business can borrow up to 25% of the turnover on the last set of filed accounts. Um, so the 2019 or the 2020 turnover, depending on when your accounts are filed. Um, and that is minus any C-bills borrowing that you have already taken, so 25% minus the C-bills. Um, so an example of this um, could be that if your last filed account show a, a turnover of £1 million and you've already taken 150 on C-bills, then you have £100,000 left um, to take on the RLS scheme of allowance um, to get you to that overall 25%. Um, it's worth mentioning as well that the bounce back loans um, do not factor into this equation. It's only C-bills loan. So you can take a uh, 50,000 and then still on top of that have 25% of your turnover um, on, on a recovery loan. Um, 
I suppose the key differences compared to a C bills and bounce back loan scheme are that on the new scheme you don't get 12 months um, of the government paying your interest and also as well there's no 12 month period of capital of no capital payments um, however the the similarities are that the um, are that there's no personal guarantees on on, on loans up to 250,000 um, and although you don't have the um, the period of no capital payments a lot of lenders now are also doing um, uh, one year or six months of, of interest only payments which should um, help help the cash flow position so in terms of who who is eligible um, the lending criteria varies from lender to le lender um, but the general requirements either from the bank or or the banks or the uh, the private market market are um, are fairly strict um, in an ideal world they would like to see profitable accounts a positive balance sheet good credit and strong bank statements to get an approval um, which I understand can be a quite a lot for businesses that you know just come out of covid but this is kind of what I'm seeing come out of the market um, obviously, if you don't have all of the um, those points I've just mentioned, then don't worry. I'm shortly going to come on to uh, some other uh, other options. Could you uh, flip to the next slide, please? I think I should have spoken on that one. The uh, the slider for that, please. Perfect. Thank you. Um, so yeah, unsecured lending. I, I break this down into into two areas really. The first one is business loans. So outside of the government support schemes, there are a, a large number of lenders that are offering unsecured lend, uh, loans, uh, business loans. Um, this could be through one of the banks or one of the private alter alternative lenders. Um, it should be mentioned that although in the industry they refer to a loan as unsecured, um, this really means that there's no charge on a on a commercial or residential property um, but typically all nearly all loans outside of the government's um, the government schemes will require some form of security um, whether that's a personal guarantee or company debenture or, or some form of assets um, there are a few lenders that can do it completely uns unsecured but i think yeah, most lenders will need some form of, uh, of security outside the government schemes. Um, in terms of the rates, it um, varies again, lender to lender. Um, it can be reflected by the credit score, profitability, security available, and typically the rates can vary um, anywhere from around 3% APR to, to 20. Um, moving now on to credit lines um, and overdrafts this is um the number of lenders offering this type of um offer this type of facility which is a bit more flexible than a business loan um because obviously you can borrow the funds as and when you need to so it may be um beneficial for a business that may need to cover um have a cash shortage over a period of, a short period of time um for example they may need to pay staff um whilst they'll get waiting to get paid by their customer it could be they just need to to purchase stock uh, many businesses will use this as a safety net um for quieter periods whilst it also gives them the cash flow available at any point in time to take advantage of, of market opportunities um, next slide please So invoice and trade finance. So this is kind of the the other side of the lending market um, that a lot of businesses will will use. Um, invoice finance is simply a tool that businesses can use to free up cash in their unpaid invoices, um, as long as the good or service is delivered before the invoice is raised. Um, so an example of this is is rather than waiting thirty or sixty days to get paid you can get paid um, on day one, freeing up cash that can be used elsewhere within the business. There are a few variations of invoice finance. The main two different types are you've got um, traditional whole book invoice finance. Um, and this is something that maybe the the, the bank may offer or, or some of the, the more traditional invoice finance providers. So 
with that, you'd, you'd sign up for a 12-month contract with a three-month, um, typically a three-month notice period. Um, you'd be paying a, a service fee to have the the, uh, the facility open, and, and actually every time that you would use it, you'd be charged an, another fee as well. Um, the other type um, of finance, uh, invoice finance on the market, which is kind of gaining popularity at the moment, is selective. Um, which is simply a, a pay-as-you-go facility. So there's no cost in having that facility open, and then you just would pay on, on actually what you draw down as a pay-as-you-go basis. So the price really on, on invoice finance would depend on if your client is, is based in the UK or overseas. Um, they'll also look at the size of the invoice, the size of, of your client and the strength of that debtor. Um, so for example, if you're um, selling into Amazon or, or uh, Microsoft, then you know that that's obviously a very safe um, invoice, and, and you know that is, is highly unlikely that one of those companies is, is going to go into administration. Whereas if you're dealing with directly to one of those companies, but through a, a local smaller distributor with no real trading history, then then that cost will be reflected because that would be seen as as more high risk. Um, Security wise, um, lenders can do it on a completely invoice finance on a, on a completely unsecured basis. So with no personal guarantee, um, but it will vary on, on the um, on a case by case basis. Um, and some lenders will want a, a charge. Some lenders will want a, a personal guarantee, but but there are plenty out there that will do it completely unsecured. Um, this business as well, this this um, product, sorry, is uh, also available to startup businesses. Um, and the lender is more interested here in the contract um, rather than with the actual um, the financials of the business. So loss making business can benefit from from this product, whereas on the unsecured products I mentioned on the previous slide, um, the lender would be more focused there on the uh, on the financials um, and the profit of the business. So on the next one, trade finance. Um, this product is used to fund the front end of the payment cycle. So more specifically, um, the lender will make supplier payments for finished goods with a confirmed order from the customer behind it. Um, an example um, of how this may be used is it may be a, a, an office furniture business, um, has a very large order comes in much beyond its kind of usual levels of trading yeah, from a, a big um, blue chip retailer, um, but just simply doesn't have the money to, to pay the supplier to buy the stock in. Well, what they would do then is actually show that that purchase order then to a um, to, the, to the lender and the lender then would go and pay the suppliers so they could take on, got the funds to, to take on that, that larger project. That's typically how it is designed to be used. Um, so this could be used as a as part of an invoice finance facility um, as kind of a hybrid kind of solution, um, but also as well the, uh, the the product can be used as a standalone facility um, as well, well as well as that the uh, you can use it to to purchase um, ingredients, materials, or, or partly finished goods, and that that's typically called supply chain finance. Um, Usually lenders will want some type of security for this product um, could be a personal guarantee uh, from a homeowner, but there are some lenders that will do it on an unsecured basis. Um, next slide. And yeah, on this slide, I've just detailed a few of the other um, types of products that could be available. Um, there's a quite a, a number of different types of products on the market. Unfortunately, there's not, not enough time to go through them all today. Um, but yeah, if you'd like to discuss things in more detail, um, please do get in touch with my details at the bottom of this slide. Um, and yeah, thank you very much for your time. Uh, thank you very much, Alex. Um, th there are some questions popping in, in into the uh, chat bar, so we'll take those questions at the end of the presentations. Um, our next speaker is uh, Alan Thomas from Development Bank for Wales, and we'd like to uh, thank Alan for joining us today, despite the fact that he's on uh, leave in uh, sunny 
West Wales. So please, Sally, and uh, the floor is yours. Good morning, everybody. My name is Alan Thomas. I'm a regional manager and fund manager with Development Bank of Wales. I think the first thing to consider when you're looking for funding is there are lots of different options out there and to research them properly, make sure that the funding you're applying for is good for what you're doing. If you need cash flow finance, that's different to commercial mortgage. Uh, so you need to look at the market and try, try to understand what is available. We tend to look at the funding requirement and see how we can help. And if there's other ways of funding it, we will we'll approach other funders as well to make sure the solution is appropriate. Sorry if you think uh, I'm sort of still did the way I'm speaking. I'm getting a lot of feedback in my speakers, so I apologize for that. Can I have the next slide, please? Okay. We were created by Welsh Government, who own us, but we work at the arm's length to help SMEs and businesses generally in Wales. Our targets, if you like, are the amount of companies and businesses we can help in any one year. So, you know, we're there to be used to help you to gain funding, even if we don't provide the funding ourselves. Next slide, please. We have a range of different funds, from micro loans for small businesses, up to equity investments for bigger inv bigger businesses. Um, and our limit is about 5 million in a single investment. Although we do do ongoing investments where we go above 5 million. So generally, we have lots of different funds on offer, different terms. I can usually find something that will f work for you. However, we still do work with all the other funders to make sure it's, it's the appropriate package that we get for you. Next slide, please. Our funding structures aren't off the shelf, so we design it to go with what the need of the com company is. I mean, often that is a straight capital interest repayment loan, which is fine, that's what works. But sometimes with projects, it's interest only or even interest roll for a period with more lump sum repayments because that's the way the project needs to be funded and the way that the income flows. We have a dedicated portfolio team. So once somebody like me or one of my colleagues uh, does a deal for, for one of you guys, you then get an, a somebody from our portfolio who stays with you, keeps in touch and sees if there's any more they can do to help you. And we also have a network of co-investors. So if we are doing equity investment, we will often ask another investor to get involved at the same time and usually at the same rates that we are offering. Next slide, please. I'm not going to run through all these. We've got a lot of funds these days. We've got just short of a billion out on ma under management. And we are fairly confident when people come to us now, there is something we can offer that will work. That doesn't mean that if you come with a sec fully secured project, we won't say, well, actually, you're better off having a commercial mortgage for that because you get lower rates. But if there's a, a little bit left to be funded, we can always fund the gap anyway. Next, please. We, this, these are my contact details. Uh, we are going to take questions at the end. I'm happy to take questions at any time. Uh, we're also happy to be approached through our website with, a, with any requirements you're after, and somebody will come back to you and talk to you of how we can help. Thank you. Thank you, Alan. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you, um, we do work closely with uh, the Development Bank and um, we do get a number of leads from your colleagues as well, uh, which is very helpful. Um, some innovative companies around here in Wales. Our next speaker is Paul Wright from London Forfeiting Company. Um, when I saw LFC on the slide, I thought he was speaking on behalf of Liverpool Football Club, which is one of my loves, but um, afraid not. So, Paul, the floor is yours. OK, um, morning all and uh, thanks for the introduction, Alan. Um, and I guess, sorry, I'm not talking about LFC, um, as in your version of LFC. Um, thanks as well, Stephen, for introducing or uh, introducing me to the opportunity to speak today. And hopefully when you've uh, heard a couple of slides, you'll understand why, um, what, I guess, why we've been invited along. So if we can move to the next slide, please. 
uh, and then the next next slide. Okay, so where all there's a slide say, so we've been around since 1984, um, so we're quite well established now. Uh, and our focus is on providing cross-border trade finance solutions to UK exporters. And we work across a wide range of sectors um, and markets. Um, we are a non-bank financial institution, which I think is one of the things that uh, Stephen mentioned earlier. Um, and as the title suggests, we are based in London, although I work out of the north of England. Um, and we also have presence in various countries, including France, Germany, Malta, Turkey, Singapore, China, USA and Brazil. So even though we're quite a small organisation, we do have uh, quite a, an international footprint. Um, our first focus is to work with, uh, from a UK marketing, marketing perspective, is to work with UK exporters to help them um, ensure that their overall proposition is, is, is as competitive as possible. So. Yes, they need to focus on our clients need to focus on you know, having the right specification and, and pricing in an attractive level for the buyer. But what we find is that payment terms can be quite important as well. So you can have both those things ticked off. But if you're not able to offer um, flexible financing to your buyer, then, then in some cases uh, you might you might struggle. Um, so essentially, our, our principal solutions are um, receivables financing solutions. Um, albeit it's not, and I'll come on to it with a couple of case studies so you'll understand it, it's not invoice discounting in a sense that maybe Alex mentioned earlier. Uh, but essentially what we're doing is we're offering a mechanism for a uh, UK exporter to um, supply goods, uh, then maybe get paid in say 180 days or one year, two years, three years, four years, five years, but not have to wait for the cash. And we provide a facility that does that in, in a way that the risk is, is retained by LFC in the sense that you know, they weren't, you know, the payments weren't made, so it's non-recourse financing. Um, next slide, please. So uh, the first case study um, is around, uh, I guess it highlights one of our core solutions, which is providing financial solutions under a letter of credit. Now, a letter of credit will be known to some people and, and, and not known to others. Um, but very briefly, so this is an example of a company based in Manchester, um, who, you can read this slide, but essentially they provide uh, vacuum coating machines around the world. They're a very successful uh, UK exporter. Um, and they had a, a customer who was wanting to pay under a letter of credit. The customer was based in the Middle East, um, but they were looking not to pay it uh, on delivery, but wanted to pay over two years. The reason that we were introduced, so you know, LC confirmation and discount is something you can get from, your, from, you know, from the main uh, banks in the UK. But what you might find is that on occasion there are markets or maybe banks in a particular market which are, are not something which um, the main UK banks can consider. And that's that's where we got involved. So we um, we uh, worked with Bob's to put in place uh, a letter of credit that worked for them uh, and allow us, allowed us to do the, the, the financing. Uh, they then present the documentation to LFC, uh, having shipped the goods and we discounted that for them. So they got their cash and we collected over two years. So that worked really well uh, and was a good example, I guess, of us being an alternative. And I think that was the, sort of the headline in terms of the, the rationale of the presentation around alternative solutions that might be out there. So LFC providing a solution that you wouldn't have been able to get and which they couldn't get from their bank, which I think was uh, potentially Lloyd's. Um, next slide, um, please. So this one is, um, Quite an exciting area uh, that we've been involved in recently, and it, it feeds into uh, what the, the slides that Steve introduced. And within the slides that Steve introduced, um, there was a mention of the various areas of support from UK export finance, and one of them was buyer finance. Now, within that, there was a product called, I think it was Bills and Notes, um, and this that's central to this um, solution here that we provided for a Scottish exporter called Routomead. Uh, and this was one of the first transactions that we completed last year under the bills and notes scheme. Um, so um, again, in a very, very good company, uh, manufactured most of what, sorry, export most of what they manufacture, going for a long time, but they had a Chinese importer that wanted finance. Uh, and they, more importantly, the Chinese importer wanted to structure it using a ECA guarantee. So using a guarantee from UK export finance. And the advantage for the importer was that that meant that they didn't need to put up any guarantee locally, so there's no cost locally to them. Um, so UKF were looking for a solution and they came to LFC to be the institution that provided the financing. So we, so on shipment, 
uh, Router Mead, rather than taking cash, they took payment undertakings from the buyer in China. Um, and then we, we as LFC, because we had those guaranteed by UKEF, we were able to buy those off the export to Router Mead for cash. And we're in the process of collecting uh, the proceeds over the next five years. So, um, again, that went really, really well. And um, we've been very active in that particular scheme. And it's something which UKEF has developed over the last couple of years. And we've now, I think, as of this week, we've got two more transactions completing. So we'll have completed eight in, the la in around the last 18 months. Uh, into markets including China that I've just mentioned, but Mongolia, um, Thailand, UAE, Trinidad. Um, and we've, we're basically very, very active. And whilst it's not in the slides, I will point out that the last deal that we did was for an exporter in the north of Wales. Um, it was introduced to us by UKEF. And they've used the product twice now, and there's another deal lined up for later in the year. So it definitely works. And it's an example where UKEF is working with maybe a sort of an alternative institution, but to provide a solution for a UK export. So that's that's been really excellent. Um, then case study three, please. Um, so this is a trade loan. So whilst our principal activity is dealing with uh, future receivables we do have the ability um, to provide financing. So this is, I guess, pre-shipment finance. And uh, this is what Alex referred to probably as, as trade finance. And the scenario here was that there was a UK supplier of uh, manufacturing equipment to the te textile sector. It was into Bangladesh, where you might be aware there's obviously where a lot of clothes are made. Um, the export needed funding to pay some of their suppliers uh, prior to shipping the equipment. Uh, and this is so we provided that funding. Um, our payment was secured by the incoming letter of credit, which we uh, advised. Um, uh, so we didn't, that was the security that we had in the transaction. And we also, at this point in time, we used UKEF under the working capital scheme to provide us with a guarantee, effectively allowing us to provide the quantum of the, of the loan that was needed. So again, it just demonstrates that we're um, willing to work with UK Export Finance, where it allows us to provide I guess, enhanced solutions to, to our client in the UK. Uh, and again, that's worked very well, and we've been active with that client a, a number of times as well. So that was case study three. Um, next slide, please. Um, so again, I suppose, how are we alternative? How are we different? So the first thing is that we are focused on trade finance. We don't do anything else other than trade finance. So we're very keen to have inquiries from companies at an early stage and to work with you. Uh, to try and tailor those and, and I suppose as well we are definitely looking to find a way to do something because we are uh, we, you know quite small and we're nimble and we're able to we don't necessarily work through a tick box or have a particular um, structured approach to things we have the opportunity to, to, to look at things on an, uh, an ad hoc basis the second thing I've already touched on we are very active into emerging markets so um, that's what we do. We get referrals from the main UK banks when they can't help their customers. Um, so it might be that the, the buy is issuing an LC out of Africa or the Middle East or, or Asia. Uh, the, you know, the bank wants to help their customer, but they can't have it. They don't have the, the appetite. So we will we will step in and just provide a solution for that particular contract. But we do work closely with UK Export Finance. So this is the one to 30 million dollar range here. We're talking about the the supply credit scheme here. Uh, and I suppose what I should say there as well, Stephen was talking about sovereign risks. All the transactions we've completed have been with uh, um, corporate buyers in, in emerging markets. So it doesn't necessarily need to be sovereign risks. So um, definitely something to bear in mind. Um, and like I say, we will work at maybe the level below which the likes of HSBC and other banks would want to work, where typically you're looking at very large values, which I think Steve referred to. And finally, um, I guess we're told that maybe there's a little bit of restriction around um, if you're an SME, whether or not you can actually get access to the products or maybe the specialists from the main relationship banks. Obviously, we're just doing trade finance and we're very approachable. So um, and, and welcoming and welcome early stage discussion. So final slide. Well, second to final slide, please. Um, so. Essentially, this has just got our contact details on it. So my name is Paul Wright. You can see my phone number and you can see my email address. Um, like I say, we work with very closely with our customers at an early stage to help them shape something which is commercially attractive. Uh, and the other thing we do as well is we send out a quarterly update talking about what we've, you know, providing a general update on the market. Um, 
internationally in our appetite for bank risk. So if you're interested in, in getting some an update quality from us, just uh, send us an email and we'll put you on our mailing list. And then very finally, I won't talk to it. Final slide, please. Uh, I guess just as a, a reminder, as a sort, I guess key words really, uh, as a, as a reminder to what we get involved in. So we, yes, we do get involved in using the banking system for collections. We do get involved in letters of credit, confirmation, advice, and discounting. We do uh, discount bills of exchange, and we do provide trade loans. So again, if you after the after this uh, this webinar, if you have a look through that, and if anything seems relevant, please do reach out. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Paul, for a, a very comprehensive uh, presentation uh, and the number of uh, case studies, uh, which I found interesting, especially that you're uh, helping uh, a business from North Wales as well. Um, we have had some questions in. Um, the first one, what, what are the minimum requirements to be able to apply for by your credit facility? I think this one's for you, Steve. I believe you're on mute again. No, no off mute. Thank you for the uh, for the question. Um, basically, the minimum requirements really for a buyer credit facility are uh, they tend to be for larger type infrastructure projects where the end buyer is a uh, national sovereign state or an extremely large um corporate um minimum i would suggest minimum value really is sort of 25 million and upwards the uh, infrastructure projects pr projects tend to originate from government or from large companies who will often be transparent and put the uh, a tender as such out to the market, which will obviously include UK export finance. Um, national governments these days tend to have to work on a very transparent basis. Um, that's really important because they obviously need to, to be seen that everything is, is clean. Um, and in terms of the project uh, putting it together, there obviously needs to be an assessment of the viability of the particular project. In other words, what the government is actually going to get for its money. And there would need to be a feasibility study in terms of uh, time, etc., in terms of potentially how many years it would take for the project to actually fully pay back. Um, the legal documentation involved in a buyer credit facility is also pretty complex and is tailored to each specific project. Um, in my former banking life, I only ever got involved in a couple of these. Um, and in my experience, they took so, circa between 12 and 18 months. So uh, not for the faint hearted, there's a lot to it and there needs to be quite a bit of uh, time and investment put in place so i hope that answers the question uh thank you steve um there's a couple of questions here for alex um you're talking about factoring the invoices for a percentage however this will lead to a shortfall at the end of the project and secondly what are the typical turnaround times with these finance providers okay so so the first one could you, do you mind just repeating that first one again sorry Uh, sorry, um, you're talking about factoring the invoices for a per percentage. However, this will lead to a shortfall at the end of the project. Okay, I mean, it, really, the the factoring costs or the invoice finance costs obviously come at a cost, and and really that that cost in all cases should be outweighed by the the cash flow benefit from from input from from factoring them. Obviously, if it's going to you know, if it's going to be in a position where that cost, the margins are, are so slim that that cost is outweighed um, by the well, where that cost is, is actually outweighed 
by the benefit of, of the of the project and, and the finance, and that makes sense. But if it's in a yeah, if it's in a situation where you know it's going to put going to leave the the project in a um, where it's, it's actually in a loss making position, then that wouldn't make commercial sense. So I think it's on a a case by case basis. Um, but obviously, finance always comes at a cost. But that cost, yeah, it, it, the cash flow benefit should outweigh that that cost in, in all cases. And if it doesn't, then you know, obviously don't, don't go ahead with it. Um, but it's worth mentioning that obviously if it's if it's a strong project, then the cost should be fairly cheap um, on, on that factoring. Um, you know, it, it, you should be looking at, you know, somewhere in the region of, of maybe a percent a month, a one percent a month or something like that. Um, so you'd really have to have very, very slim margins um, for it to to put the, the project in a in a negative position. Um, and the second question in terms of how long it takes, um, it does vary um, on invoice finance um, takes longer than a loan. I'd say typically you'd be looking at somewhere in the region of two weeks, one to two weeks to get it all set up. Um, the lenders, I mean, I've seen, I've seen it done in a couple of days before, but obviously the business needs to be um, quick at, at producing the information that the lender wants. Um, but yeah, a couple of weeks on, on the loan side, that can be considered that can be same day um, to get a, a decision on, on, a, on a business loan. Um, but typically that would take about three to five days invoice finance, one to two weeks. But with the banks, it can be taking quite a bit, a bit longer than that. Uh, uh, thank you for those uh, answers. Uh, the next question, are there any advantages provided for companies who are developing and exporting green technology? Alan, will this be something for Developments Bank for Wales? Again, you muted. Sorry, yeah, uh, we look favourably at helping companies developing or developed green technology. Um, there isn't specific discounts for it, but we look at each scheme on its merits uh, and we look to try to support it. So yeah, we, we are in favour of green schemes and it is something that's becoming more to the fore all the time. Thank you. Uh, Stephen, have you got anything to add from the UK export finance angle? Yes, uh, I would agree with Alan that from a, a UK perspective, uh, we look, would look favourably on green initiatives. Um, be obviously because of, of, of climate change and, and everything else that, that uh, is going on and the uh, future conference that we've got coming to Glasgow in, in November. So, uh, there aren't any preferential terms for green technology, uh, just that they tend to be, uh, shall we say, at the forefront and we all like to look at green technology transactions. Uh, thank you, Stephen. Um, are there any other questions from the uh, from the audience? Right. Um, I take that as a no. Then um, ca ca can I just take the opportunity to thank all our speakers this morning for giving up their valuable time and to you, the businesses as well. Um, the slides will be circulated uh, to all the attendees together with an evaluation form and the um, the session will also be available online as is being recorded as well. Um iawn i chi gyd am gymryd rhan yn y webinar a, a pob lwc. Thank you very much once more. Thank you. Thank you, Alan. Thank, Thank you, Alan. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you very much.